No other book has so profoundly impacted so many lives as the Bible. Welcome to Simply the Bible, the Through the Bible teaching program of Pastor Daryl Zachman of Calvary Chapel, Treasure Valley. You know, conflicts among neighbors aren't that rare. But how can we resolve these disputes in a way that promotes friendship rather than makes long-standing enemies? Well, we hope you'll join us as Pastor Daryl continues in Genesis chapter 21, right here on Simply the Bible. The wealth of a person's life consists in his or her relationships. But let's face it, relationships can be difficult. It can be very hard to reconcile with people who have been alienated from us. Proverbs 18.19 says, A brother offended is harder to win than a strong city, and contentions are like the bars of a castle. Today we'll see how Abraham turned a stressed relationship into a blessed relationship. We pick it up in Genesis 21 verse 22. And it came to pass at that time that Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his army, spoke to Abraham, saying, God is with you in all that you do. Now, therefore, swear to me by God that you will not deal falsely with me, with my offspring or with my posterity, but that according to the kindness that I have done to you, you will do to me and to the land in which you have dwelt. And Abraham said, I will swear. Abraham's previous encounter with Abimelech had not gone so well. Abraham had deceived Abimelech by telling him that Sarah was his sister. Then Abimelech brought her into his harem and consequently God's curse upon his household. When Abimelech discovered that he'd been deceived, he was angry and confronted Abraham. He then gave Sarah back to him and loaded him down with goods. He also told Abraham that he could stay wherever he wanted in the land of the Philistines. No doubt, it was a strained departure. However, as Abimelech watched Abraham, he observed how God was blessing him in all that he did. He began to think of his posterity and wanted to secure the future of his children. So he went to Abraham to make a treaty and brought Phicol, the commander of his army. Abraham swore that he would deal honestly with Abimelech and his descendants according to all the kindness that he had received. Verse 25. Then Abraham rebuked Abimelech because of a well of water which Abimelech's servants had seized. And Abimelech said, I do not know who has done this thing. You did not tell me, nor had I heard of it until today. Abraham took advantage of the opportunity to address an issue that had been bothering him. He had dug a well, which Abimelech's servants had seized. Now, water rights were extremely important in the desert, especially when you had so many flocks and herds. So this had been a sore issue for Abraham, though he never said anything about it until now. But Abimelech denied knowing anything about it. It is easy for disputes to occur between individuals, especially when the two people are different. Abimelech was a Philistine and Abraham was a Hebrew. Abimelech had a harem. Abraham was married to one wife. Abimelech was polytheistic. Abraham was monotheistic. Abimelech was a landowner. Abraham was nomadic and didn't own any land. The Lord, however, is a God of peace, and he wants us to make peace whenever possible. That is why Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. The Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 2.17, Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. In other words, when you feel like giving it back to them twice as hard, don't. Take the high road. Do what's right. And God will bless you for it. The author of Hebrews tells us in Hebrews twelve fourteen, Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. 
Indeed, in this verse, holiness is related to pursuing peace with others. This is difficult for us to do. Let's face it, it's far easier to bear a grudge or cut someone off than to go through the pain and effort of working through real relationships and working out the differences. But that is sin. And God wants us to be like Christ. Look what Jesus did to make peace between God and us. Look at the pains that he took. He went to the cross. Making peace with a neighbor, friend, or family member may require that we also lay down our lives and our own rights and pursue that which makes for forgiveness, reconciliation, and mutual edification. It doesn't matter if we are the offended party or the party that has given offense. The burden is on us to make the first move toward reconciliation. He who is most spiritual among you make the first move. It will likely mean that we must humble ourselves and confess our own faults, even if we think that it was primarily the other person's fault. The truth is that we are all sinners, we are all broken people, and we need to give grace as much as we receive it. I will confess, I have not always done so well in this department. There have been times when I wish I would have handled things differently. I wish I would have tried harder to put things right. But sometimes you can't go back and undo the past. Sometimes you can't take back things that have been said. And sometimes when you try to make it right, the other person isn't willing. So in those cases, what can you do? You just have to leave it with God and pray. But I believe we always should have a heart willing and open to reconcile with anybody. Why? Because God is into reconciliation. All you got to do is look at the parable of the two sons, the prodigal son coming home, and the, the heart of the father to see both of his sons reconciled. Abraham was willing to make a treaty with Abimelech, but he also wanted to clear the air by dealing with this issue that had been bothering him. Abimelech had told him that he could dwell wherever he wanted in the land of the Philistines, but then Abimelech's servant seized the well that Abraham's servants had dug. When Abimelech denied having any knowledge of the incident, Abraham made the extra effort to turn this cool treaty into a warm covenant. Verse 27. So Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them to Abimelech, and the two of them made a covenant. Abimelech had given many gifts to Abraham. Now Abraham returned the favor by giving him sheep and oxen. In this way, the two men made a covenant. This is the first time the word covenant is used in Scripture between two people. Verse 28, And Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. Then Abimelech asked Abraham, well, What is the meaning of these seven ewe lambs which you have set by themselves? And he said, you will take these seven ewe lambs from my hand, that they may be my witness that I have dug this well. Therefore he called that place Beersheba, because the two of them swore an oath there. Abraham gave Abimelech seven more ewe lambs as a witness that the well belonged to him. Therefore he called the place Beersheba. Now beer means well, and Sheba can mean either seven or oath. So it's sort of a play on words. It could mean either well of seven or well of the oath. Either way, it would be a memorial that the well belonged to Abraham and his descendants by a solemn oath, a covenant with Abimelech, the Philistine king. I see this as a great example of the importance of commitment. One area where people in our culture lack integrity is in keeping their vows. People will say most anything to get a deal or to appease others, but then they fail to do what they say. David wrote in Psalm 15, Who may worship 
in your sanctuary, Lord. Who may enter your presence on your holy hill? Those who lead blameless lives and do what is right, speaking the truth from sincere hearts. Those who refuse to gossip or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends. Those who despise flagrant sinners and honor the faithful followers of the Lord and keep their promises even when it hurts. These things are hard to do and rarely found, but they are as needful today as they were in the days of David or Abraham. Some people can be trusted for millions of dollars on a handshake. Others can't be trusted for a hundred dollars in a multi-page contract. We should all take pains to be people of our word. Better not to make a commitment than to make it and break it. Verse 32. Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba. So Abimelech rose with Phicol, the commander of his army, and they returned to the land of the Philistines. By exercising wisdom, integrity, and generosity, Abraham turned around a strained relationship and turned a foe into a friend. Verse 33. Then Abraham planned a tamarisk tree in Beersheba, and there called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham stayed in the land of the Philistines many days. Planting a tree is a sign of longevity. You don't do it unless you're planning on staying for a while. I was thinking about this the other day. We are considering selling the house that we've owned for 16 years and building a new home. But frankly, it's taken 16 years for the trees to grow up. And I don't really want to wait another 16 years for that to happen all over again. That's just the reality. So you only plant trees when you're planning on staying for a while. And I think that's what was going on with Abraham. You see, if you're a landowner, you build a house where you plan to settle. But Abraham didn't own any land. He was a nomad and a stranger in the land, moving from place to place. So he planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba. As an old man of 103 years old, he probably felt it was time for him to put his tent stake down for a while. And where better than Beersheba? Here Abraham called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. This is the only time in Scripture that we find this name for God. May I encourage you that if you are estranged for someone, don't give up hope. Sometimes it looks like it's impossible. And from man's perspective, it probably is. But remember that all things are possible with God. The question is, are we willing? Are we willing to do our part? It's never too late to reconcile with someone you love. Wisdom, humility, integrity, and generosity, and above all, unconditional love, go a long way in bringing down the castle bars and winning your brother or sister back as a friend. You've been listening to Simply the Bible, the Through the Bible teaching program of Pastor Daryl Zachman of Calvary Chapel, Treasure Valley. They meet Sunday mornings at 1030 at Pepper Ridge Elementary School right here in Boise. If you'd like to listen to any of Pastor Daryl's teachings or to find out more about the church, go by their website at calvarytv.org. That's calvarytv.org. You'll also find an email address and we love to hear from our listeners. Hey, Josh. Hey, Roger. What's up? Hey, you know how most people get nervous when it comes to taking tests? Oh, I can relate to that on a a big scale. (laughs) Especially you with going to school this fall. Being a student, I can totally relate. Well, the deal is for tomorrow, we're going to see what happened when God gave Abraham his final exam. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm already nervous already. I'm nervous for Abraham, and it already happened. Hope you'll join us next time right here on Simply the Bible.